Hello everyone, in this lesson we're going to discuss how to calculate the perimeter and area of different two-dimensional figures. We'll also be using some of the skills we've learned about radicals, including combining like radical terms and multiplying radical expressions. So let's start with a couple of basic concepts. The first is that when you measure the perimeter of a two-dimensional figure, you're simply just finding the distance around the edge of the figure. So if you're dealing with a polygon like a triangle, a rectangle, or a square, you'd simply just have to add up all the lengths of the sides to get the perimeter of the figure. On the other hand, when you measure the area of a two-dimensional figure, you're finding how many square units of space are enclosed within the boundary of that figure. So let's think of, say, the classroom floor, which is covered with tiles that are each one foot by one foot. That'd be an example of a square unit, that'd be a square foot. You can also have a square centimeter, a square inch, a square kilometer, Sort of depends on what you're measuring, which one would be most appropriate. So again, let's draw an example of a square unit here. Let's say if I drew a square, which has four right angles, and four congruent sides, and they were each one foot by one foot in this example, that would be an example of one square foot. And the notation for that is just one and then feet squared. So let's say we wanted to measure the area of the classroom floor. We'd simply just be counting how many of those floor tiles would cover the classroom floor, how many of those square feet um, would be needed to completely cover the classroom floor. So if your shape is nice and rectangular, there's actually an easy shortcut to finding how many square units would fit inside. So let's say I drew a rectangular figure like this, and we had, say, five square units that would fit in this direction and I could also fit three square units going in the other direction, and I wanted to know how many total square units would cover this figure. Um, there's a very simple shortcut to this. If it's three square units in one direction and five square units in the other direction, the total number of square units is just multiplying those two dimensions together. Three times five, say let's say the length and the width of that figure, which gives us a measure of 15 square units for that rectangle. Next, let's discuss the area formulas for some of the basic shapes. We'll begin with the rectangle, and let's first mark up that this shape here is in fact a rectangle by putting in four right angles. It's the definition of a rectangle, a four-sided shape with four right angles. One of the properties of a rectangle you'll also want to know is that its opposite sides are congruent, so let's mark that up as well. These two sides would have the same length, and these two sides would have the same length. Now, as we saw on the last slide, to find the area of a rectangle, you simply just need to know its two dimensions, the length and the width, or the, what we'll call the base and the height. So we'll label this side as B for base, and this side length as H for height. And to find the total number of square units that fit inside that rectangle, you simply just multiply the base and the height together. Now, one thing to realize is that base and height meet at 90 degrees. That's actually an important part of what makes that shortcut work. For a square, we can think of it as just being a special case of a rectangle. It still has the four right angles, but a square has four equal sides. And we'll actually label each side length with S this time. So we'll say S here and S here, all four sides that have the same length. And we could think of it as being base times height, or we could write it as side times side, or in shorthand, side squared. To calculate the area of a triangle, we again need to know what's called a base and a height. A base is simply just the side of the triangle, so let's say we chose this side as the base. The height would measure how tall it is to that side from the opposite vertex. So let's say we picked this opposite vertex here, again, that's our choice of base, that'd be the opposite vertex. The height would be measured like this. We want to know how tall that triangle is, it'd be measured straight down at 90 degrees. So again, notice that base and height here meet at 90 degrees, they're perpendicular to each other. That's pretty important. And for this right triangle here, let's say we made this side our choice of base. How tall it is from the opposite vertex would just be measured along this other side here. So for a right triangle, um, you could actually pick the two sides that already meet at 90 degrees as being the base and the height you could use. And to calculate the area of a triangle, you would use one half times the base times the height. And we'll talk quickly about why that's one half. 
at least in the case of the right triangle. You can actually see this as being half of a rectangle with the same base and the height. So that rectangle that would fill that entire space, uh, say made by those dashed lines, would have an area of base times height, and that right triangle takes up exactly half that space. Finally, another basic shape we'll talk about in this unit is the circle. Now, to calculate the area of a circle, you just need to know its radius, which is the distance from the center to anywhere on the circle's border. And the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. And there's also a special rule for the circumference of a circle that's good to know. So circumference of a circle is simply just the name for the perimeter of the circle or distance around the outer edge of the circle. And you could find the circumference of a circle by calculating 2 times pi times the radius, or since 2 times the radius is the same as the circle's diameter, you could do pi times the circle's diameter. So now let's look at a few examples of calculating perimeters and areas of some of the shapes in the last slide. In our first example here, we're asked to calculate the perimeter and area of a rectangle whose sides measure 4 radical 5 centimeters and 6 root 2 centimeters. So this also means we're going to have to use some of our skills with radicals in solving this problem. Now I'm going to begin by drawing a diagram of this rectangle. It's a good geometry problem-solving strategy. If the problem doesn't have a diagram given to you, definitely make one. And to mark off as a rectangle, we'll put in four right angles. And we'll also mark off that the opposite sides would have the same length. So we're told that the sides measure 4 radical 5 and 6 radical 2. So this side here we'll label as 4 radical 5 centimeters. And we'll say this side here measures 6 radical 2 centimeters. Now we know the opposite sides have the same length in a rectangle, so we could label 4 radical 5 centimeters for this side here, and also 6 radical 2 centimeters for this side here. To calculate the perimeter, we simply just have to add up all the sides of this rectangle. So we'll say it's 6 radical 2 plus 4 radical 5 plus 6 radical 2 plus 4 radical 5. So in this expression, there are some like radical terms that we could identify to simplify. So 6 radical 2 is a like radical term with 6 radical 2, and also 4 radical 5 is a like radical term with 4 radical 5. So to simplify the expression for the perimeter, we could say 6 radical 2 and 6 radical 2 combine to 12 radical 2. Again, be careful with that. Think of that as 6y plus 6y. We'd call that 12y if we were in Algebra 1. And then 4 root 5 and 4 root 5, when we combine those, we get 8 radical 5. Again, you want to think of that as something like 4x plus 4x. You would call that 8x if you were in Algebra 1 last year. Now this expression we're left with, 12 radical 2 and 8 radical 5, does not contain any like radical terms. So we cannot go any further in simplifying this. So we'll just say the perimeter is 12 radical 2 plus 8 radical 5, and we'll parenthesize this and put the unit of centimeters on it. That would show that the unit of centimeters applies to both parts of that expression, both the 12 radical 2 and 8 radical 5. Now let's see, we fully answered the question when we found the perimeter, but we have not found the area yet. So the area of a rectangle, as we know, is base times height. And for this particular rectangle, the base and height would be 4 root 5 and 6 root 2. So we have to multiply 4 radical 5 by 6 radical 2. Now keep in mind, we are multiplying these two radical expressions together, so I'm going to regroup this. Since we're really just multiplying four numbers together here, 4 times radical 5 times 6 times radical 2. And I'm going to regroup this as 4 times 6 times radical 5 times radical 2 that reveals how we'll simplify this expression. As we know, 4 times 6 is 24, and radical 5 times radical 2 would make radical 10. So we're left with an area of 25, or I'm sorry, 24 radical 10 square centimeters. And we could stop there, since radical 10 cannot be simplified. There are no perfect square factors of 10 that would help us go any further. Our next example asks us to calculate the perimeter and area of a square and we see the square has sides that measure 2 root 3 meters. So let's label that every side is 2 root 3 meters here. So again, to calculate the perimeter of a square, we simply just have to add up all four sides of the square. 
So we could write the expression 2 root 3 plus 2 root 3 plus 2 root 3 plus 2 root 3. Or we could realize that all four sides have the same length. And writing that expression is just the same as having 4 times 2 root 3. Again, since we'd just be adding that length to itself four times. And to simplify this expression, we just have to realize that we are multiplying three numbers together here. 4 times 2 times radical 3. And we could write that expression as 8 radical 3. Again, 4 times 2 makes 8. And we could write the expression as 8 radical 3 meters for the perimeter. And again, there'd be nothing wrong with writing 2 root 3 plus 2 root 3 plus 2 root 3 plus 2 root 3 and combining like terms as well. For the area of the square, we would use side times side or side squared. And in this case, that would be 2 root 3 squared. Now be careful how you write that, because you're squaring the expression 2 radical 3, you want to put that in parentheses. And whenever you're squaring something, it's a good habit to write out exactly what that means, which is multiplying that by itself. In this case, 2 root 3 times 2 root 3. So in multiplying this expression, we'll again use some regrouping to reveal how we'll simplify this. We're going to write this as 2 times 2 times radical 3 times radical 3. Again, we're just multiplying four numbers together there. We're just reordering the way in which we wrote the multiplication. We know 2 times 2 makes 4, and radical 3 times radical 3 would make radical 9. So we have to be careful to pause and ask if we could go any further in simplifying this expression. In this case, we can go a little bit further, since we would know what the square root of 9 is. In this case, we could go a little bit further and say that the area is 4 times 3, since the square root of 9 makes 3, or in the end, the area would be 12 square meters. So again, just be careful to pause and ask yourself if there's any further simplification you could do when you're working with radicals. In our last example here, we're asked to calculate the area of a triangle on the coordinate plane. So let's begin by reminding ourselves of how to find the area of a triangle. It's simply just half multiplied by base multiplied by height. Now keep in mind that when we say base, we mean one of the sides of the triangle. And in this case, zy would be the easiest choice for a base. So if we identify that measurement, we could simply just count, since zy is perfectly horizontal, and it's 1, 2, 3, 4 units long. Now, the measurement for the height would be how tall it is from the opposite vertex to that choice of base. So if we wanted to know how tall it is from point x to that base zy, we'd have to measure that straight down at 90 degrees like this. So again, base and height when you're dealing with triangles must meet at 90 degrees. It's very important. And again, to identify the measurement for that height, we could just simply count again, since that segment is perfectly vertical. And that measurement would be two units if we count. One, two. So again, very important to keep in mind, base and height must meet at 90 degrees or be perpendicular when you're finding the area of a triangle. And if we calculate the area, it's half times the base measurement of four, multiplied by the height measurement of two. Now, students often get confused on how to deal with the one-half in this expression, and I'll show you two different ways you could calculate this. Um, one is to realize that you're really just multiplying three numbers together here, and you can pick kind of any two you want to multiply first. So let's say I multiplied the base and the height of 4 and 2. I'd have to do one-half times 8, and we would know half of 8 is just 4. You could arrive at 4 square units for that area. Now, another way to think of multiplying by half is that you're really dividing by 2. If I have half times base times height, that's actually equivalent to base times height divided by 2. So another way to think of this is to multiply 4 and 2, and then divide that result by 2. So 4 times 2 would make 8. Divide that by 2. It's another way to get to that area of 4 square units. So whichever way you find easier, uh, they're both equally nice ways to simplify that expression of half times 4 times 2. To end this lesson, here are a few practice questions for you to try on your own. Remember that to get full credit on your video notes, you have to attempt these practice questions. You want to make sure you go back and look at the examples in this lesson, and you may also want to consult your notes on radicals when you're solving these problems as well.